Romans chapter 5, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, we have peace with God. Now, having peace with God is not the peace of God. Because the peace of God is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is something that does not happen suddenly, but it happens over a period of time that God gives you peace of God. It is a peace of God that comes through having endured many things and having gone through, as a child of God, a great deal of things until God brings you to the place where you have the peace of God or you have his peace. It's interesting because uh, do you do Valentine's Day here? And on Valentine's Day, if your beau or your Joe or your, uh, your significant other does not come with the flowers and the candy, immediately you get upset and you get angry. Now, if you've been through enough, a petal will do. Uh, should I say that again? You see, uh, people who have not had to endure very many hardships have a tendency to falter and to crumble when certain things don't go their way. But if you ever have been through enough, you can have peace without having anything from anybody and you don't have to get ugly because somebody didn't deliver I wish I could talk to you here uh, if you were hungry every day and you didn't get anything on Valentine's Day but some food you would rejoice and be exceeding glad uh, I have not been in coach I have not flown in a coach seat in 15 or 20 years. It's always first class. And because I rearranged some things and couldn't get here, I had to fly in a coach seat from Miami to here. And I said to myself, it's a good thing that I had to fly in a coach seat because I've become so spoiled that if it's not first class, I'm not going. See, if you've been through enough, you will appreciate the little things because you would have gained the peace of God. Thank you, sound man. Now, peace with God is not the work of the Holy Spirit, but it's the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. It is immediate because once he shows God the blood then I'm allowed into the throne room with God. If there is no blood I cannot enter the throne room because I can't have peace with God unless Jesus sheds his blood. So justification then uh, diakonos is just as if I never sinned. It has nothing to do with my behavior. It only has to do with the behavior of Jesus on the cross, the blood. I was flying to South Africa some years ago and I was rolling with, I think it was uh, Bishop Jake's few other folks that I had to do something for me in Africa. I live on the west coast, they live on the east coast and so they go to sleep three hours earlier than I, then you add another two hours to my nocturnal behavior, and I'm going to be sleeping five hours after they are. So what I do when I'm flying with them is I get a red light that I put in and wrap around my head and sits here so that I don't turn overhead lights on to do whatever I'm doing so I won't disturb them. I reach for my headset in other yes, my sound system, and I flicked it on, and the red light hit the red light on the sound system. When I flicked the red light on, 
the red light that I had on my head hit the red light and immediately the light looked white. When the red light hit the red light, the red light on the Dr. Dre's looked white. When I moved the red light from the red light, it was red again. But when I put the red light on the red light, it looked white. <gasps> I heard the Lord say in Isaiah, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as wool. So I discovered a truth on the light, and that is when God looks at me through the blood of Jesus, I look white. When he removes the blood of Jesus, I am the way I am. So I have nothing to do with being white. It's just Jesus' blood, once it's placed over me, makes me look like what I'm not. It's just positioning. So justification is a positioning. It's not a work. That's why justification is by faith and not by works. You can't work hard enough to look good to God. For your righteousness is as filthy rags. Oh, I feel something coming fast. By whom also, he says, we have access by faith in this grace wherein we stand, that's verse 2, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our, holy, in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. I want you to look at somebody with all the ebullience you can find, with all the energy you have. Look him dead in the face and said, I've been approved for my blessing. Look at somebody else and say, I've been approved for the blessing. I've been approved. It's significant because when you understand the ramifications of justification, it is justification because of the grace of God. Nobody in here has the right to put anybody out because nobody in here deserves to be here. You can't put me out of a place that you don't deserve to be in in the first place because none of us came in here by our personal achievement. It was all by the will and the grace of God. That's why he can choose me in him before the foundation of the world. He didn't have to wait till I got here and he doesn't have to see a resume because I will not be worthy of his blessings anyway. If I am going to deal with you in business or in relationship, I would like to know your history based on your portfolio and your resume. I'm going to check your credit. I'm going to see whether you pay your bills. My brother, well, he liked a girl down in Washington, D.C. before he got married to another woman. He loved this woman in D.C., he told me. He checked her credit and found out that her credit was bad, and he subsequently broke up. He broke up over his relationship with the woman because of her credit. I was sitting out with my fair, my mother and father and we were having dinner with Grace down in New York. And Maxie's wife got up and said, I make more money in my bonus than he made all year long. And I said, what? She's talking about my brother like that? And I felt something rise. I 
got up to say something to her and then I remembered that's why he married her. You got to understand that oftentimes we have the tendency to grasp that God is the one who blesses and justification then is by faith and the grace of God is wherein we stand. Now notice what he says, we have access to the grace wherein we stand. I suggest to you that nobody in this house can ever walk up to God and say, God, I am so holy now that we need to renegotiate the concepts of grace. I wish somebody would rise up and tell me that you have been so blood washed, so holy, so righteous, you live so well that you can say to God, God, remove grace as it relates to me and let you and I talk about justice. You can ask for justice all you want. You can ask for justice. I want mercy. Oh, I feel like shouting here. I'm not going to go and negotiate, renegotiate grace because I need the grace of God every day. Day. That's why Jeremiah told them new mercies he presents to us every single day. Why do I need new mercies in the morning? Because I used up all my mercies today. And I'm so glad God's got a supply of mercy that no matter how much I need, he gives. I have access now, according to the text, in to the throne room because the blood of Jesus has allowed me now to come into the throne room by grace. The only person in the universe, the only being in the universe that I want on my side is God. And when I have favor, I can walk into the throne room and I can ask him for whatever it is I need. I can walk in with boldness because Jesus has shown his blood and his blood has set me free from any wages to pay to God. Do you remember in the epistle of John where John says if you confess your sins he's faithful. Yes not only is he faithful but he's just and faithful to forgive. Ask yourself the question how could it jump from grace to faithful and just how can it jump from grace to justice and faithful ah it goes easy with me because nobody should die twice for the same set of sins it is unfair i remember when i was in longview texas had an old widow who was renting or buying from a deacon in the first baptist church she ran short of money and he wanted to repossess her house i went to him and i said to him i'll pay her payment and i'll catch her house up and he went back behind me after I paid him and still repossessed her house. Oh, I paid twice for one house. Can I talk to you a minute? He's just and faithful to forgive because Jesus died for my set of sins. And if I confess my sin, grace doesn't step in now, but justice does because it's unfair for God. God to take my set of sins that Jesus died for and charge me for it. If Jesus died for it, I don't have to pay it because I'm totally free. And every time I come to him, he's faithful. Not only is he just, but he's faithful. So when you're trying to destroy me, all I gotta do is confess. And when I confess, he He'll wipe me down and set me back on the way of righteousness. Now because I have favor, here comes the devil. Touch somebody and say, whenever you have favor, watch out for the haters. Whenever you 
have faith. Can I preach like I feel it? I got to preach quick, but I feel something pushing me. It's something about favor that makes people angry who aren't in touch with God. Uh, I, I, when I see you blessed, you know what it says to me? My blessing is on the way. I feel like preaching somehow. Somehow you've got to understand that when you pray for somebody, you're never envious of them because you believe that their blessing is because of your contact with God. And that's why we touch and agree. And I say, when I pray with you, when you get yours, don't forget to pray for me because we're all in this together. And when I see God blessing you, I know he's on his way to me. Can I preach like I feel it? Uh, give me, give me, give me four people real quick. Four people, come on here real fast uh, and stand in line. Uh, let me tell you this, stand facing that way. Uh, turn around the other way. Uh, turn around the other way. Uh, you know, sometimes when we come to God, we don't understand the dynamics of praise. Uh, and we feel sometimes that it's who we know that makes the difference in our lives. So we try to climb our way up inside the church because we believe it's a who you know in the house of God. And we try to climb up to get to the folk who we think are significant. But I got news for you. Stay right here and give God the glory. Thank him for how he brought you out. When other people look at you funny when you pray, in him praise him anyway and if you can't stand my praise then move to the next row because when I think of the goodness of Jesus Stay right here, don't move. Do you remember the woman that the disciples said, send away? And she kept hollering, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You came in the church and you drove up in a Lexus. You had the finest husband in town. You got yourself together wearing the baddest clothes. I came to church on the bus. I don't have any any good of any kind of wife uh, you got the best I have nothing uh, you kneel down to pray there were no holes in your shoes uh, but the front of mine was flopping uh, my kids are the craziest kids in town and yours all have degrees uh, and you expect me to sit here and act like I don't need anything from God I'm gonna holler I feel like talking. I'm all holler till I get my blessing. You got yours and you don't want me to holler for mine and you're talking about send her away. The devil is a liar. I'm on scream. Give somebody a high five and say I'm getting ready to holler. I'm getting ready to holler while I'm hollering and it looks like I'm in the back of the line. Everybody turn around. Uh -huh. Now the first shall be last and the last. You, thank you. The last shall be first. Give some money high five and say, neighbor, God's getting ready to turn the line around. Once you have favor, then here comes the devil. And the devil wants to upset you because you have access. Have you ever been to a concert? I've been to many with my friends. And the best thing they can ever give you is a badge that says all access. That means I'm not in the back of the building. I can go anywhere in the building I choose. I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus has given me 
to the throne room of God. I'm no longer in the back, but I have favor. And the devil hates that I have favor. I feel like lifting him up. Y'all excuse me for a minute, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. When you understand favor, then you understand trials. So we glory in tribulation also, because here comes the devil. Never take the negative negatively. Always take the negative positively. Because what it tells me is I have favor. When folk don't like me, I have favor. Not only is it coming from the good side, it's coming from the bad side. You think you're trying to break me, but all you're doing is reassuring me that God is on my side. You're trying to avoid me because you don't like me but all that tells me is I'm doing something you talk about me because you don't have anything to talk about but me because God is on my side I feel like preaching brother devil so here comes the devil and he thinks he's going to break you but you glory in tribulation also because you know what tribulation is going to make you. I'm not coming out of this tribulation worse. I'm coming out of the tribulation better. But tribulation worketh patience. And patience is hopomone. And I've learned how to remain under. If it's going to make me better, I'm not running from it. I'm running to it. If it makes me pray more, and reach for God more then I'm going to wait till the job is done because patience worketh uh, patience does its full work that's why tribulation worketh patience it's doing something with me I'm learning how to praise him under duress hoopamone don't run from it go through it don't try to avoid it go through it don't back up and go somewhere else and leave your church over somebody not liking you go through it don't you leave the choir because the director can't stand you go through it stay right there and talk to God don't you leave your city because the other pastors can't stand your blessing go through it stay right there and call on God I'm not backing up out of here because you don't like me uh, you're not God can I preach like I feel it uh, somebody will tell you you can't make it without me the devil is a liar the only one I can't make it without is God uh, I feel mm, I feel good in here tonight uh, shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off uh, and say stay in it uh, stay in it uh, and don't complain praise God while you're in the middle of it give him the glory Lord I thank you for my enemies Lord I want to do good to them that despitefully use me I will not let folk cause me to hate them because they hate me because I'm above them and they're trying to pull me down and the only reason they're trying to pull me down is because they're already below me can't nobody pull you down who's above you it's folk below you you. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Give somebody a high five and say shake the dust off your feet.